Yeah, but bros, I thought if it couldn't be me without Combine Rusher, maybe you could. Maybe you could salvage Eva in set 11 and take her to the top. But no, they took Combine Rusher away from you as well. And therefore, we are left grasping at straws. Welcome everyone to a much requested Eva DBT11 deck profile. I know a lot of you wanted to see this and therefore I am providing. But this is the Eva list that I played in WGP Nagoya and came very, very, very close to topping. But unfortunately, bubbled and didn't make it into top cut. I really worked on this list a lot. I was trying out a lot of different things. And I haven't really changed it since then, even though the Japanese meta has changed since then. But because I'm presenting this to you English players as a sort of like, you know, you play this at the beginning of set 11 kind of deck profile, I think that it'll be quite good, but definitely experiment quite a lot. So like I already told you right now, I don't play the new Blitz order package, which I know quite a few EVA players have been playing. Some EVA players don't even play the new EVA whatsoever, and they just focus on the old EVA with Assembler, which English should have now in set 11 too. So definitely experiment with it. But today I'm going to be showing you the list that I played for Nagoya and just kind of explain my thought process behind it. Eva is still my favorite deck and I really hope that the meta slows down at some point so I can enjoy playing her again and if not then I guess we're gonna get another broken promo. So anyway a lot of the stuff in this deck of course I've already explained throughout past videos such as the ride line itself of course it's all Eva. No reason to change it don't fix what's not broken the deck is amazing you know the ride line is amazing as it is you don't have to really shift it. Speaking of shifting though I will shift my cards a little bit to a less glary side of the table but the ride line is as it is I think you don't really need to make any changes and just kind of play it as it is you don't know what they do the grade one searches your orders the grade two searches your orders and then the grade three of course lets you see one and look at the top cards of your deck equal to how many research cards are in your order zone and add one to your hand then get plus 5k and the rest go to the bottom and on attack she can almost one so last one to search your deck for an obscurate name card call it to rear um oh no it also call it from hand and then uh you shuffle your deck if you search your deck so basically of course the weakness of this deck was that you would eventually run out of gas because you would just either run out of obscurates or run out of cb in the late game and stuff like that too and the support in this set did help to address that so i am quite thankful for it and so let's just get into the main meat and potatoes which is the other evas right so we're playing three more copies of the regular eva because she's still the better one you still want to be riding this one all the time you want this to be your first persona ride it can be your second as well depending on how much cb you have left and what your deck situation is as well i'll zoom in a little bit more but you still want to be playing her as your main Persona Ride target, so that's why you do play still the three remaining copies. But we are playing two more copies of the Poison in Paradise Eva as well. So Poison in Paradise Eva it has a slightly different effect. So she says, when she is ridden from the original Eva Grade 3, you search your deck for a research card and add it to your hand after revealing it and shuffle your deck and then activate Persona Ride. So make sure you don't mess that up. Don't draw from Persona Ride first and then search. You will get probably game lost for that in a, in a high stakes tournament. You have to first search the order and then you can shuffle so it's nice it does decks in out an order which is cool especially if you're bricking you know if you don't have your fourth order to start re you know reusing your grade one orders then riding her will put you into that good situation which is nice and she also activates persona right so you know sometimes you'd lose games just because you couldn't keep up with your opponent persona riding on you all the time so now we basically have five persona rides in the deck which is pretty good it also means that if you ditch your eva early game you don't feel as damaged by it you don't feel like you're you ruining your entire long-term game plan by just doing that so that's also good plus point and then our second effect is when she attacks she is able to bind the original grade 3 eva from the soul in order to search your deck hand or drop for an obscurate named card call it to rear and for that turn that unit and this unit get plus 5k each and if you search your deck you shuffle your deck and at the end of that turn you ride the card you bound for this cost as rest so you do get an extra soul from it too now what's really important about this effect is that she calls from drop as well so in the late game you really like going into the poison and paradise eva because she's able to call an upgrade from your drop and therefore you know you don't have any more left in your deck you can still search your deck and shuffle it and then call from drop as well just like you could with the hand in the past eva too so because of that i think that it's perfectly fine to run just two copies because she's more of a late game card and like the plus 5k is also pretty relevant too because she's gonna be 28k on her own no matter what just like the old eva was too and so you can spam like the blue research lab onto her as well so she gets the plus 5k from that as well to make better numbers but also the obstacle that you call like if it's a grade 2 is gonna be 30k on its own which is really nice if it's the grade 3 is gonna be 38 on its own so right it's like the plus 5k does matter it pushes for some pretty interesting numbers but most importantly for a long term game plan she's really good and i did start out playing more copies of her initially i tried to focus on four of the new one and not play any of the old one but i felt like you just have too much cb right if combined archer was still there you would just run four of this no questions asked but right now it definitely is a different story i also really wonder why they hit eva and jet before this set even comes out because now for the bro standard meta it's going to be just two decks like 
Gandiva and Willister basically, but in set 11, Eva will still be good enough. I think if you really love Eva and you want to just do your best with her in BCS, I think she will still give you that safety, but the meta has sped up and fast metas are just a little bit rough for Eva because she doesn't have early game tools. You have to basically call down assemblers if you run them and swing with them early and like make your opponent attack into them. So like they think they're damage denying you, but in reality, they're prolonging the game. So you're going to win in the late game. So you have to kind of like distract their aggression like that. If you can do that, it's good. But it's kind of weird that it's come to that. Up next is pretty straightforward, honestly. We are running four of the Grade 3 Obscade, of course, the Crit Gainer slash Extra Power slash, you know, Interceptor plus 10k Shield, etc. The good stuff. You know, he's a really good card, and for that reason, of course, Eva has been very good too. And then, of course, we have our usual order lineup, so nothing changes in here either. So we have our four Blue Research Lab that helps you find your uh, cards from the top. I've told you guys about sequencing and stuff with this card too, so keep that in mind. And of course, four of the grade one research as well. So just like the typical lineup, there have been some discussions about lowering this ratio just because the new Eva can help you find them. So like playing less of this basically, but I feel like playing like this is still the best, one of the best cards in the deck. Like it just helps you get TC, helps you give soul, helps you get the obscurates back, which are 10k shields no matter what. So I feel like you still want to be running four and four, but feel free to experiment with the Blitz Order. I think the Blitz Order is very interesting, but you would have to cut some stuff like your extra Persona Ride copies or things like that. And of course, we are running the Grade 2 Obscurate at four copies as well, just because it is, of course, a great card. Rimaline effect on a Grade 2 Beat Stick is very nice, especially when it's a 10k shield. And of course, it still has a bit of its own power too, but that front row attack effect is really nice. Although in this format, we have a lot of things that clear off their own front row. So it's like Minerva oftentimes is like, well, can put stuff back into soul so it kind of passes on no front row willista bounces her stuff with yuika so she passes on no front row so his strength has definitely fallen off compared to like when you just played eva mirrors all the time or like even against gandiva it's actually pretty nice and of course you know the the fact that it can't be retired is nice against gandiva but at the same time you know it's like i really wonder what they're gonna do to support this deck because bushro knows how popular it is i'm sure they want to support it then um, I don't know if I've done a deck profile on this deck since BT10. I feel like I might not have, so this is technically a new inclusion, which is the Habitable Zone. Habitable Zone is, of course, the Grade 2 cycle card that says when discarded in your right phase, you saw boss 1 and put it to the bottom of the deck to draw 1. Very important! This deck doesn't have any early games, so being able to ditch these is very nice, and if you have 2 in hand, then you can also use it for early aggression, or distraction at this point. And when placed on rear, if you have Persona Road this turn, you can boss 1 to switch your deck for a set order, reveal it, add it to your hand, and then for this turn, you will be be able to play two set orders instead of one for the whole turn and the next set order you play is going to be for free and because we play this card i might as well just include it immediately we have the refablishment dock so refablishment dock is a great two order from set three it was just a common that says can one to play it and when this card is put into your order zone you draw one so you get to skip that cb1 and just draw a card from playing it which is nice and when it's in the order zone it says that all your grade two rear guards gain boost so this means that not just habitable zone is a 10k booster but your grade two upscale is a 15k booster that can turn into 20k with the help of the blue research lab and so generally speaking you want to like you know set the, the blue research lab and then you know like pull this out and then use this to search out the refablishment dock and play it for free and you get a draw and now your grade twos are going to be huge boosters against gandiva you can also set up a field of like three grade two upgrades in the back two grade three upgrades in the front and now none of your regards can be retired and you have a very threatening board at the same time i feel like eva is like on the brink do we just need the meta to change a little bit and eva will be back but i think we'll see we'll see i think we'll probably get another like glitter support set probably like bt14 or something i expect so i can only have high hopes going into that but republishment dock together with habitable zone is very nice and it helps us to draw cards which of course is very good up next is the perfect art so you might notice you know slight rarity upgrades i finally got frpgs i'm supposed to have these from the beginning but i was too lazy to, to find them and then i was like you know what i think this is the coolest pg art like i guess coolest pg art like i have the prize card here as well i really wish i could have gotten this prize card with with eva though but like if you had to compare it which one do you think looks cooler i still think the bt6 pg just looks like it's a cooler dragon to me the bt1 dragon just it's just a dude <laughs> just a little dragon doesn't look that unique this one looks like he's like towering this could be like a raid boss but then of course the one elementary sanctitude as well typical pg lineup nothing too crazy to talk about in here our one ot the eldo breath still the best over trigger in my opinion being able to double your power and crit is really good especially in this deck and i mean in any rank 8 deck really i mean it's just a crazy card that just like randomly wins games it feels like the most unfair ot out there so of course we're gonna play it heel trigger lineup is basically there for mikazuki minichka and gandiva it is the crit heal so this is of course if your opponent's um unit 
unit that is attacking has gained a critical through an effect. It's up 25k shield, which is good. Helps to block Endeavor in the early game, so when they swing with a 23, you present this as a 38, so it's 2 to pass. And then, of course, if you add like a draw to it, then it's 3 to pass. Because the game Ishka as well usually swings for 18, so this is also immediately just like you're dropping it down as like a 38, so an extra 5k, I guess, can go a long way, but you can also leave it at 2 to pass. So I think. This mixture of heals is pretty good. I've been running in a lot of my decks lately. And then we have our three draw triggers. So I am running the three draws instead of four, just because I feel like we don't really want to take away from the crits. I feel like it's always, I always say this about Eva, but she gets pressure from the fact that you deck thin so much and then you have so many crits left in your deck and you're able to basically just overpower them by, you know, having extra crit on your grade two, on your grade three upgrade, sorry. And then if you like check another one, you have lethal swings all around, which is very nice. So I think three draws is enough because we need to be playing the full crit lineup. So here we have our effect crits, which I think are still important just because sometimes you don't have that soul for the um, Eva effect. And of course, on top of that, we are running four regular crits as well. So eight crits in total, I think is just really good. I feel like you want to be having uh, eight crits, as I said, for that win con that we mentioned earlier. And that is basically the list. So now let's go over some of the mulligan stuff as usual and see, I'll try to set up some board states and stuff that you might also want to keep in mind as you play through the game. All right, let's get shuffled up and run a little bit of a, you know, mulligan, the usual. I know you guys really like this. I feel like I'm surprised other content creators don't do it as much, or maybe they do and I'm just not aware of it. But I feel like it's a very nice way to not just go over deck lists and just kind of like, you know, just, just throw it at your at your uh, community, but also just kind of show off how the deck actually wants to mulligan. By the way, if you actually want to see this deck in action, um, the YouTube channel members have an official or not official, a <laughs> exclusive video of me playing this deck in first person POV. So you can check that out. But look at this opening hand. We basically don't have a research order, which is a big yikes. We do want to keep the habitable zone because it's an extra draw and that will help us to draw into whatever pieces we need, whether that's a persona right or not. Everything else got to go like we don't need obscadades right now. Persona rides are nice. Research. Ooh, that's a, did I really shuffle this deck? I don't, I'm not too sure. This might be the kind of game where I'm pretty happy to be ditching persona rides just for the sake of, uh, you know, not dying to like early aggro. If this was, if this happened in tournament, I would be sweating right now. But anyway, let's get into it. I will I have my mic very awkwardly positioned, so it's kind of hard to draw cards here. But this, oh, we don't even have a starting manga. What is going on here? All right, let's just say we start with uh, going first. So we want to just ditch the habit zone of course and ride up the order you want to do in my opinion you always want to use the habitable first so you want to soul blast one and of course put it to the bottom to draw one first and of course you could theoretically draw into one of your researches but the reason why i say that is that we want to do this because then we get to shuffle this habitable zone that's stuck at the bottom all the way to the top potentially i mean not to the top but the chance of drawing into it again for the next turn the chance of drawing into it is gets higher right so it's not super high it's only four in the deck of course but we want to raise those statistics as much as possible so we're gonna first just like search that out we got the draw from this we went first so we don't get any extra draws so we're gonna just set the order and pass take a damage you know it's nothing too crazy probably not getting aggro too much on the turn one we try to do another persona ride we don't need this many i think this is a situation where we can afford to ditch this eva here as well because we just have too many personas and and then on ride, of course, we're going to search out our grade one research because we already have the grade three in hand. And then we want to just kind of give it a good little shuffle here as well. And with that, we can set this and no combined rusher to use and also no... Oh, we do have a great top skate. So here, what I've been experimenting quite a lot with this deck is actually just rushing a little bit on turn two with great top skate because if you, let's say, go second against Gandiva, they actually can retire this by their effect, even if they go up to grade three first because you have this active. You don't have to be on grade three ever for this to be active, which is really nice. So here you can basically just like swing in like this. I personally speaking, because we don't play front, I would swing rear first just to kind of force in that first damage. And then even if they check a defensive, you can still pierce through with it. And if not, I mean, hey, we got another habitable for next turn, so that's not too bad. And then basically we're going to take a damage. We get a draw, which is nice. So we get to draw cards. card, so we're probably going to attack into this. So that's going to get lost, which is not the end of the world. So two CP is all we really need to. So it's honestly working out quite well. And then, of course, keep in mind, before you ride up, you only get two chances to use habitable zone because you do need one soul for the Eva herself. So we're going to ride up and then we need to keep one soul, of course, for the actual Eva skill. So we get to use our second habitable zone, put it to the bottom of the deck and draw a card. And we'll get to shuffle it back up later down the line, too. So here we're going to go in our usual sequencing, um, set the order first, look at top five, try to find something good. We don't really need habitable right now, but that great two upgrade is going to be very much appreciated. So it's going to help to wipe out any attackers our opponent might have put up as a counter, which is very cool. Sorry, no, some people, nobody's ever mentioned this, but I do like technically only do like a few of these, you know, sh riffle shuffles on, uh, you know, when I do these videos, but 
Obviously, shuffle properly. Um, don't just do two riffles and pass. But we call this out, which is pretty nice. Now we can use Eva's effect to CB1 and then use the top three look skill. The top three is looking a little mid, to be honest, because we have not that much shield in hand. We don't really want to like thin our deck out of Obscadates 2. But at this point, we have so little shield in this hand that adding more orders isn't really going to do us anything. So I think we do want to just take the Obscadate at this point. And because the new Eva does call from drop, we can reuse them no matter what. So we're not actually really stressed about it. We can actually use it as an attacker too in the early game, which is also quite cool. And now we don't have any more spare souls, so the battle is usually going to go like this. You want to like wipe out the front row if they have a front row. And then here, you essentially can just go like Eva Swing, and then of course CB1, Soul Blast 1. And then you get that Grade 2 Obscadate into the drop, while basically pressuring with the extra crit here on the Grade 3 Obscadate 2, which is very nice. And now if we see any crits here along the way, that'll be very cool too, because this one has the crit, this one doesn't. But of course, they're both pretty big attackers. So we get to heal, which is nice, so we appreciate that. And of course, ooh! A habitable zone that's great so you then get to swing you know whichever order depends on how much damage your opponent's at sometimes you want to swing with a crit one first sometimes you want to like push them to three and then kind of force them to kind of stop there as well and the next turn let's say we just take a bunch of damage no effective heals we take two triggers defensively which is pretty nice and then get to let's say like intercept um you know guard some attacks and whatnot just to kind of try to survive the very non-defensive hand we got here and usually the first ride for, for like the first persona ride you want to do is on the old eva just because she does help you to like obviously there it was a question mark because i don't have a second blue research lab so i could have might have wanted to ride this eva first to search the blue research but you know here i think in terms of sequencing i want to thin out another order for my deck in order to raise the chances of the top five in the blue research lab to be five units so we're going to cb1 and immediately search out the dock just to make sure it doesn't pop up in our top five here and so this way we've thinned out another order which is good we have a higher chance to draw in to see better cards now we get to a set two orders this turn so only the next one that we set is free though so if we want to set this for free we have to set it now so we are gonna set it add it to here so we don't have to cb for the draw so we do get the draw let's hopefully not draw into an obscurate cool we draw into another blue research lab so we can just set it as we do and now we get to look at the top five and find four triggers this is why i stopped playing eva bro this is why i stopped playing eva in tournaments it's gonna make me bald uh look at this look at this it's so painful it's like at this point, you all honestly might as well just call a booster behind Vanguard, as long as it's a 5k, so you have to be careful to not call your non-5k triggers. Oh, this is... I swear to god, it's... <laughs> it's rough out here, bro. It's rough. How does this happen to me? Anyway, let's use Eva's act skill. We have four research orders, so we can look at four cards here. Find a PG, sure, let's go for it. You could also use Habitable Zone if you have more CB, but we don't. So the PG is going to get added. You don't show it to your opponent. It feels like using using four seal stone, bro. That's crazy. And then, of course, we're going to use the grade one research in order to counter charge one and get an obscurate back into our hand. You have to check, check your hand here. So see what attackers you have. So we have the grade three obscurate in hand already. So we can call that out earlier and then add back a grade two. And we don't have actually any. Ooh, we don't have any grade three obscurates in deck anymore. So I actually saw all of them here. So at this point, I'm trying to think if we want to actually get the grade three three out in order to call it out from deck because we already have a great two so i think we are going to do that we're going to take the great three just for the full multi-attack potential so kind of depends on if you want to deck thin here or not as well and like where your opponent's at we do have a spare soul so we're going to make use of that to use it to rest for the blue research lab and then give plus 5k to something vanguard line is 33 so it's actually a pretty good number so we can actually give it to this great two obscurate in the back to make it a 20k booster so here we can swing it's on persona right so we can swing 33 first into the vanguard and then swing with the eva and then she'll use our last cb that we have available to cb1 soul blast one and then search the deck for an obscurate i think at this point we're going to just like prioritize deck thinning because we're going to go into the poison and paradise eva so at this point we can just call this out get the front row wipeout, which I think is going to be very nice, and then just shuffle our deck, and then get the twin drive in as well for a heal. A heal's pretty good. Uh, I guess we can say we still heal, maybe. Maybe a poet poem has been lucky with healing too. And then this is already th hitting for 53. This is hitting for only 35, so we can make this hit for 45. So 45, wipe out whatever interceptors they have, or they probably intercepted prior to that attack, and then we get to swing with this 53k column too. So it's huge numbers, and then let's say next turn we take some attacks. Surprisingly, the OT is not out yet. 
currently at four damage here and then you get to you kind of want to you know think about how you want to build your board you know what kind of cards you have here as well maybe i want to like guard with all of my obscadates here because i'll get some of them back for next turn and then maybe drop a pg here as well because we're going to search a uh, research as well here too so now we know there's no obscadates in the deck anymore for going into this turn and we're going to just draw a card to get another habitable which is cool and then we can ride the poison in paradise and first search for a research card see if we have one we actually don't have any more left so you can see like this deck is like super compressed we have one two three four five oh no we do have a research card i'm blind <laughs> i'm just blind we have one two three four cards that aren't triggers in our deck and our deck is basically like what this is six twelve so pretty high chances to be checking criticals and triggers and all that stuff so definitely this is kind of what playing eva is like now we activate persona right let's hopefully not draw into a trigger we do unfortunately <laughs> Man, I just have fun playing this deck. It's it's something else, you know? So we can still set a blue research lab to try to look at top five and just thin out uh, non-triggers. So we're going to thin out the habitable zone to try to raise our chances for checking those triggers and especially to OT. You know, that's one of the win cons that this deck has. I think I might want to call it here to kind of like keep the good boosters on the other side and then call this obscadate and then here... Of course, if you're playing against like a Diva or something, you might not want to get rid of your last, uh, you know, <laughs> your last grade one research. But if it's anything that doesn't retire, you can kind of safely use it to get back your Obscadate into your hand. And then we can use Blue Research Lab to Soul Blast, not the grade three Eva, be careful with that. Otherwise, you can't use this Eva skill. But here you can kind of just like go into battle. Here you can make a stronger attacker. If you're really going for a game this turn, you can theoretically like overcall this because you just called it off the top for like deck thinning purposes. And let's say like we give the plus 5k from the Blue Research Lab over here too. So let's say here we swing. This is a third. 33 right now on its own and then Eva's gonna swing she's 28 33 38 and then we can actually like look through the deck if we want to and just like shuffle it up of course if that was a draw into OT it would have been pretty unfortunate so we shuffle that up a little bit and then we can just call from the drop zone into another grade 3 upscale that now gets plus 5k and the extra crit as well so it's really good we get the twin drive we get a draw into what I shuffle this deck what happened what is going on oh, oh my god <laughs> But basically, you get the point. You get the point. You deck things super hard, and then you're just super compressed as long as the game goes on long enough. And if you want to annoy Gundiva players, this is the board to aim for. Nothing can be touched. Just make sure you don't accidentally soul charge too many of your grade one researches. All right, and that is it for this Eva deck profile. So I forgot to say earlier, but thank you so much to Izat as well, who gifted me this FFR Eva way back when uh, DBT11 released. So I made a huge post about it on Twitter, but um, it's a very, very kind gesture from him as well. So that definitely motivated me a lot to like try hard with Eva and try to find like the perfect list I could to take Eva to WGP Nagoya as well, because it was right after the new release of the new set and i think that you can definitely take this list as like a template and just improve on it because of course english is different from the japanese format because like we have certain promos you guys don't we have certain collabs you guys don't that are really strong like mushi king for example definitely is a bad matchup for this that doesn't exist in english so definitely do mess around with eva i think there's still hope even though combined rusher is gone now in both formats and honestly it's the most fun deck i've ever played next to dimension police like every time i pick up this deck again i feel like i'm back at home it's just a format for her like in bt12 and onwards it's just been kind of rough a lot of aggressive decks that just kind of like beat you up before you get a chance to really fight back. And so therefore, it's a little bit tough to, you know, when you're really... When you're playing team tournament and your team wants to win, it's kind of hard to justify bringing this deck because then your teammates might go like, well, come on, man. Like, we're trying to win here. Like, stop just playing your favorites, you know, play an actual top tier and stuff like that. Or play a deck that's going to be underrepresented so that maybe you'll get in through, like, the ride line uh, diversity cut. But anyway, that's besides the point. But anyway, if you like this video, give it a like. If you haven't already, please do subscribe and support me in trying to reach 100k. And if you want some bonus content, including bonus Eva content, you can become a YouTube channel member to get access to it, as well as the lovely, lovely members-only Discord. But with that, that's going to be it for me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.